So that was his plan, to go back in time to relieve things that's happening. While this episode may feel a little bit slow, it does carry the thing that those that fall into despair want to rewrite it. In a way, some can say that it's kind of anticlimactic and not exactly the best way to end the situation, but for someone who is constantly trying to die every single time to feel that way, it's actually pretty logical. The angry anime fan, the despair of viewer, this is Fairytale Final Series, episode 44. Uh, we first follow Christina with Blue Pegasus and uh, team, uh, well, Ersa, as Aknologia is in high pursuit of them all. As Anna explains how the time rift works, she intends to trap Aknologia in it, hoping that that will at least, uh, the being will, won't be able to, uh, well, escape something that is time itself. Seraph himself also wants to use that time thing and he's waiting for someone to open it, or at least he's expecting it to open. Because that's his Neo-Eclipse plan. His Eclipse plan allowed him to... Uh, to allow another person for 400 years to travel into the future. Uh, I mean, from 400 years ago to travel into the future 400 years later. Neo-Eclipse plan is almost similar, except he intends to take Mavis's magic, which was... Uh, Enhanced through the curse as well as the revival thanks to Preto and uh, He intends to use that Together with the time rift to go back in time fully to the time when before he had lost his parents Before he had lost Natsu and even before he was cursed by the god of Agsaram That is his plan Natsu tries to fight Seraph, but in the end Mavis appears saying she has what it takes to defeat Seraph but Seraph in tears just grabs Mavis and then steals her magic somehow, all the while explaining that plan. Also saying that this is the only way for both of them to feel happy. Because even though he may not meet Mavis again, he says, at least she won't have to meet him. And she, he explains it by saying that Acnologia is a being that can exist forever. For some reason, <clears throat> he does not age. Or at least he doesn't appear to die of old age. And he is perfectly indestructible. He eats magic. So why do Seraph, someone who cannot die, fear Acnologia? Well, simply because he cannot die. I mean, Seraph, simply because of the fact that Seraph cannot die, I mean. Because no one can defeat Acnologia. Even with Seraph, with all of his might and his magic power, will just fuel Acnologia. So Acnologia, a being who just hates everything and just want to destroy everything, he cannot destroy Seraph, but that would make Seraph his ultimate shoe toy. That is why Seraph fears Acnologia. He cannot die, and Acnologia will take advantage of that. He wants to destroy everything, so he will just destroy Seraph over and over again. The same with Mavis. Uh, if he could, because none of them can defeat him, because he will absorb magic. He, Seraph considered that to be an even worse fate than death. He has lived for 400 years, tortured by his attention to be good, and uh, the world rejected him. That would be the ultimate world rejection for him, and in a way that makes sense. So by st taking Mavis's magic, he enters a new shining white zone, saying that as soon as he enters outside of the guild, he will be able to rewrite time. Elsewhere, though, the Christina reveals one very comical thing about Acnologia, or perhaps the one and only comical thing. Acnologia is still a dragon slayer that became a dragon, so he is actually not immune to motion sickness either. So when his dragon form grabs Christina, they shut off the motion sickness lacrima, and he immediately lets go of Christina because he felt motion sick. I have to admit, for such a being that has some zero comedy, that is one pretty funny scene. Yes, even the most powerful dragon of them all is not immune to motion sickness. Another storyline is not Lucy, Grey and Happy opening the book of E.N.D. As many different uh, histories of uh, writing come in, Lucy begins to wonder if there is perhaps uh, a way to rewrite this. So, uh, that's basically this episode. I mean, it's pretty slow in a way. But, uh, 
We'll still see what happens. Natsu managed to enter Dragon Force and burn off his magic. Maybe is, is that a foreshadowing that he can burn off literally any magic? Well, you'll see. And trapping Agnologa in the time, while that seems logical, I doubt something like that will hold some being like that. But you give me your thoughts if you have any.